Hey everybody, it's super early in the morning for me. Um, I just finished editing this interview with actress Stacy Bradshaw. She is a Christian film actress and script writer, and uh, she's got a multiple hats that she wears and a lot of things that she's done in the Christian film industry. I thought it would be fascinating to talk to her as somebody else who uh, works inside of creating Christian culture. And so uh, this interview with her was fantastic. Stacy, thank you so much for, uh, for hopping on the podcast and, and spending an hour talking to me. And um, it was so great uh, to reconnect with an old friend uh, for me and to, uh, to hear what she had to say about the Christian film industry. It was absolutely fascinating. I'll break this up into um, little sections, to uh, little digestible sections later uh, and post, post them to the YouTube channel as well. Um, especially for people who are interested in getting involved in Christian filmmaking. Uh, she gives some excellent, excellent tips. But for now, here's the whole clip, uh, here's the whole interview, and uh, I hope that you enjoy it. How are you doing? I feel like it's been forever since... Well, I think it's been at least 11 years, <laughs> 10 or 11, <laughs> which bonkers. makes me feel really old. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, I'm doing great. Yeah. It's been... This, this year has been kind of a wild ride, kind of a crazy season, but a lot of good things and yeah. learning through the hard things and just excited for what's to come. So Yeah, that is super yeah. cool. That is super cool. Yeah. So I was looking at your IMDB page and it, I mean, it just reads like you're the busiest person in, I don't know, what do you call <laughs> Hollywood that's in Christian film industry? <laughs> Whatever that is. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But you have, I mean, you so you've done so well and managed to like get your fingers in everything. I mean, that's awesome. How'd you do that? Well, God just opened so many doors. Like it, yeah. it's just been amazing. It's like one thing kind of leads to the next thing, and this connection leads to the next one. And um, I really feel like I have done very little. <laughs> it's just been God opening one door after the other and just kind of leading me through it's just it's been an amazing process yeah that's I think, super cool i think i've done about 50 films since i since 2000 that's amazing so it's yeah that's it's, amazing I've been so blessed <laughs> okay so when i mean so like now because i've just followed you on facebook instagram whatever like every time i see your name it's not just stacy bradshaw it's stacy bradshaw actress because that's your handle on everything and like that's yeah. what you come up in my mind as now and you know when I think of you <laughs> good bonkers. branding I guess <laughs> yeah that's right that's great uh so what okay but but it's more than my point is it's more than that like you've done you've done a tons of films of course you've done a bunch of like we met in college doing theater you know and so you've done stage yeah. shows and so like what 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 all is there? Like, is I mean, you're doing voice work and you're writing. Are you producing? Are you behind the camera? What all do you do? <laughs> because oh it's my, uh, yeah, yeah. I've I've done a little bit of producing. Um, that's not really my favorite thing. I just my preference to be let me write the scripts and then show up and act in them. <laughs> nice. Um, I love doing photography too. So sometimes I'll get on yep. set and just do behind the scenes photos. I think that's really fun. Um, yeah, that's kind of, I guess, the main things, the writing, yeah. acting, and the photography, and, and, and the voiceover work, too, like audio dramas, audio books, yeah. um, trying to, hoping to, you know, start doing some voiceover commercials and stuff like that. Amazing. So, yeah. That's so cool. So, like, and that was one of the things that I noticed, you very quickly, like, transitioned during the pandemic to being like, okay, oh, nobody's shooting, we're doing, like, voiceover stuff, like, two feet in. And like, I have huge respect for people who can like, can, who can do that. Cause so many people just like get frozen. So like, what was that? What was that like? Cause I'm sure that was a little bit terrifying in the moment. Yeah. Well, actually I did stay busy with some film jobs um, in 2020. I actually had a lead role in two features, which was like incredible. <laughs> yeah. So it was actually a really good year for me with film, but yeah, but being able to transition into voiceover was really great too, especially going into this year. Um, Cause it's been a really good year for me to be at home more. And so I've been able to do more acting from home, but I think God had kind of started um, laying that path for me because in 2018, 
or 19, maybe 2019. I did yeah. my first lamplighter audio drama. So right. I got to go up to New York and, and do that. And so that was my first big experience with voiceover, but that really opened the door to do more. I did one with them during 2020. And then, um, then I, I just kind of made my own setup at home so I could record from home. And then I had friends that would just contact me like, Hey, I want you to do a role in this audio drama I'm doing. And, wow. um, and then with the Mount Hideaway series, I'm, I'm part of like the films and then we had books written. And so then it was kind of a natural thing for me to help with the audiobook. So that was That's my so first cool. time doing that. So yeah, it's just, is that the one on that there. you're, are you writing on that one as well? Right. Mount Hideaway. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. I helped write the second movie script. That's yeah. amazing yeah that's so Hoping cool it's all come out early next year we'll see but i'm really excited and i feel like we've had kind of similar experiences in in this regard so i i kind of went like the songwriting route and it was such a surreal moment i remember the first time that i uh i heard people singing one of my songs without me being on stage leading it like that was so surreal and I, I have this image in my head of you in, uh, in a bookstore with one of your movies, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, what does that yeah. feel? What is that like? Like, I mean, that's such a unique thing that like so many people on this planet don't get to experience that. And I've had such a hard time, like putting it into words where it's not like this, like puffing myself up thing, but it's like, Hey, I, I did a thing and people kind of liked it to the point where it's out there, you know, like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's so crazy. It's such a surreal feeling. Yeah, I remember the first time I walked in a bookstore and yeah, saw one of my DVDs with my face on the cover and I was like, what in the world? Like, <laughs> this is wild. You know, I always wanted to do, I love the stage acting, but I always yeah. really wanted to do film acting because I'm just better at being subtle <laughs> than being really big. Yeah. And so I always wanted to do it. And I just like, I don't know. I just went for it. But at the same time, like, I don't know that I really expected it to work out. And right. so the fact that I'm like, I actually get to do this, like yeah. God opened these doors and he's actually letting me do it. And it's just, it still amazes me. Like all these years later, I'm in 50 years, 50 films, <laughs> I'm not that yeah. old, 50 <laughs> films later, I'm just like, wow, I, I get to do this. You know, yeah. like, it's just such a blessing. And and just like some of my first films, like they've been streaming globally for years and I still get messages from people in different countries that have seen it and they've been impacted by the message. Mm -hmm. And I'm so humbled. Like, it's so humbling to know, like I was a small part of that yeah. and that it's impacting people, you know, like, and, and, you know, it's like the same for you. It's like something that you've done that you've poured your heart and soul into, and that you have such a passion for and to see it impacting people. Yeah. Like it's, it's such a blessing. Yeah. When, when somebody in my church said, I want that song sung at my funeral, it was like, Oh, I'm oh, not just wow. like putting simple lyrics and melodies together in my office. Like I'm actually doing something of eternal value that like really like is, is speaking, putting words to things that people need to sing over themselves and want to. And so, yeah, I, I totally get that. Give me like one like highlight story. Like this is, this is something that you're always going to remember. Probably one of the biggest, and I've been blessed to be part of so many amazing films. Probably one yeah. of the biggest highlights for me was being part of unplanned mm -hmm. um, because of the pro-life message. And that's yeah. something that I'm so passionate about and to be able to tell that true story and to know that like babies' lives are being saved mm. because of that movie. And, you know, yeah. and I just had like a smaller supporting role in that, but like, but I was, but, but God, let me be a part of that. And it's yeah. changing lives and it's saving lives. Like that is just, it just gives me chills, you know, like yeah. when I saw it in the theater on opening night, I had a lot of my family and friends with me. And, um, and that was really cool too. Cause a lot of them had never seen one of my films in the theater before. Um, and then as I'm leaving and my phone is blowing up with messages from so many friends around the country who had just seen it, like, yeah. Stacey, do you know what you're part of, you know? And, yeah. and like, I just, I cried all the way home. I was just <laughs> overwhelmed by it, you know? Um, but even just being on that set was a really life-changing experience. And mm. um, there was a scene where um, they're, they're bringing out these large blue barrels out of the abortion clinic. And, mm. you know, you know that what that represents is it's full of... Um, dead babies. Mm. And I wasn't originally 
written into that scene. They kind of added me in last minute. Um, and so I didn't even really know what the scene was. I didn't have any lines. I just had to show up and stand there and be praying by the fence. But during that scene, like just in the rehearsal of it, like I wept, like mm -hmm. it just broke my heart. You know, mm -hmm. I just felt a little yeah. bit, just even a fraction of God's pain for what's happening. And I just bald you know and yeah. so they had to come fix my makeup like okay now we actually had to film the scene <laughs> and like i cried for hours like every yeah. time we filmed it mm -hmm. i would just stand there and just cry because it just hurt so bad to think about the reality that happens every day yeah um so that was you know just a really i don't know impactful personal experience i had with that but yeah yeah that was that was really incredible I feel like that movie is so important and 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 like paradigm shifting for a lot of people especially I think it should be I think it should be for creatives as well because um if you're a Christian creative there's this like tendency to want to like just sanitize everything and make it like mm -hmm. so pure and clean but like even just like the idea of like the barrels represent something that's really really dark and it's evil and like yeah. You have to be able to like, and, and I think something that Unplanned did really well is show how bad the evil is before you can show how good the hope is, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, I, I think that's great. At what point in your spiritual life and your walk, did you feel like, I know you kind of said, like, I just kind of walk through open doors and God just put this in front of me, but like, I think every creative feels a sense of calling on their lives towards doing something creative. Like, was there a specific moment or a season or like, has it been a long process? How did God call you specifically into the arts? And, and then um, maybe give us a couple, a peek at a couple of the doors that you just open in order to yeah. like, affirm that in you. Cause I think that's, that is so key. Yeah. I definitely have a really great affirmation story. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would say like my desire to do film started back when I was like 11 or 12, probably mm -hmm. pretty young. And I was, I just, I grew up watching old movies, like from the 1940s and fifties. Yeah. And I just loved it. And like old Western movies with Roy Rogers. And I just like, I want to do that one day, you know, I just wanted to yeah. do it. And so I just, um, I don't know. So I was like, well, I'm just going to follow that path. And, um, but, you know, but I did feel like that's what I was meant to do. You know, mm -hmm. it felt like this is, this is what I should be pursuing. And, um, you know, so God opened the door for me to come to Brian and study theater. And that was awesome. And then after that, um, I spent two years auditioning for Christian films. Well, first of all, I didn't know, like, how is this actually going to work? Because back then when I was younger, there was Hollywood and there was, like at some point, eventually there was like the Billy Graham movies and that was it, you know, yeah. was, there was no like yeah. Christian films weren't really a thing. And yeah. so I'm like, how am I going to do this? Cause I'm not, I'm not going to Hollywood. Like I'm definitely not called to Hollywood. <laughs> right. So how is this going to work? And, um, as, and then by the time I got to college, like there were more like Christian films that were being made. It was becoming more of a big thing, like, especially with the homeschool movement and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. homeschoolers were getting out there and making movies. I'm like, okay, there's, there's hope for this now. Yeah. Um, so after college, I just kept submitting for Christian films. I auditioned for about two years. I didn't get cast in anything. So I went mm -hmm. two years with no acting at all. And I really started to doubt and mm -hmm. to think, well, maybe this is just what I wanted to do maybe this isn't what God was calling me to. And maybe I should find something more practical to do with my life. <laughs> that mm. I could actually make money at. And, you know, and I was really in that season of, I was about ready to give up. Like yeah. I was like on the verge of giving up. And then um, like all of a sudden in like the same summer, I got cast in the lead role in two different films. Wow. And one of them was like a 45 minute film in Michigan called the Wednesday morning breakfast club. And then touched by grace was a full length feature in Virginia. And like, that doesn't normally happen. You don't normally go from being like a background extra to a lead role. Like it takes yeah. years of working your way up the ranks, but just like God just opened that door and like, bam, all of a sudden I, I have like no experience on film and I'm in the lead role in these two movies mm -hmm. back to back. And I remember like, um, I mean, the Wednesday morning breakfast club was such a wonderful experience and it was really good just to kind of like get on set with just more low-key film with some friends and just kind of learn a lot through that but I really remember walking my very first day on the set of Touched by Grace it was um like that quote from Eric Little 
you know, like when I run, I feel God's pleasure. Mm, and I just had that yeah. moment that my very first scene on set, and I'm just like walking across the playground and I'm supposed to be really depressed. Like I'm acting really sad, but inside I was so full of joy because I had such that overwhelming feeling of this is exactly where I'm meant to be. And this is what I'm supposed to do. Wow. And like, it was just, you know, full steam ahead. Now I will say there were a few times over the years I'd have slow seasons. I'd go months without doing anything. Yeah. And I would start to question, well, people in my life, you know, I really supported family and friends, but occasionally there'd be somebody like, are you sure? Maybe you shouldn't like do something a little more practical. And, yeah. um, or I would just start to question it myself. Like, you know, you can't earn a living off of Christian films, you know? So like, yeah. you know, I'm just thinking about my future and everything, but whenever I would really start to doubt and question it again, like God would throw so many roles at me. Like I didn't have time to even think about it anymore. I just had, I'm like, okay, I get it. I'm, <laughs> I'm staying the course. I'm just going to go for it. So, um, whenever I've doubted, he's just very strongly confirmed that no, just keep going. This is what I want you to do. So it's been, that it's is been so great. Cool. That is so cool. Yeah. So how did that, how did that play into, um, to you starting to to write because that wasn't until a little bit later on I mean you've got two years of just like feeling like you're just casting a line out into a drained pond <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. I, I know yeah. what that feels like I mean I've I've so been there with the music stuff before it's just like you feel like you pour your heart into soul into everything and you know um into school and training and you feel equipped and you feel called and then and that's the thing is I, I I really appreciate your story because I think that God does that to weed out people who don't have great character <laughs> because mm. because people who don't have great character aren't going to continue based upon like the vision that God has placed in their hearts in the first place, mm. you know? Yeah. And so like, I think that you, the two years without you acting probably made you a better actor, actress, you know, like they probably did because God was working yeah. on you in the midst of that, you know? And so what was the transition like going from acting into writing? When did you decide like, and I know you've been, you've been into the photography thing for a while as well. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm interested in the writing because I'm, I'm writing a book right now. And so it's, oh, cool. fun to, it's fun to talk to other people who sit behind computers alone. And just <laughs> yeah. <type>, so. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and the writing thing is, it's really funny. I started writing like little short stories way back, like in my early teens, mm. because we didn't have TV at my house. Nice. Um, so when I went to my grandparents, it's when I got to watch the movies. And I just, I craved the stories and mm. I, and I, well, and I wanted to act so bad, but I had no way to do it until mm. basically like, the year before I came to college, I think was the first time I ever even did like a real play. Well, no, no, 2003. So by the time I was 17, 16 or 17 was the first time I actually got to do wow. actual acting. Yeah. But up until that point, like years and years and years and years of just feeling this draw and like wanting to do it so badly and having no way to do it. And so that's when I started writing. Um, because in your writing, you know, when you're writing like just creative stories, you can kind of like live it in your imagination. And so it was an outlet for that, yeah. that creativity and that desire to be a part of these different stories and live them out in a way. And so, um, so yeah. I started writing little Western short stories and World War II stories and just stuff. I don't think I ever like finished hardly anything and they're absolutely terrible, but you know, it was oh, a fun sure. outlet for me at the time. And then, and then in college, I took some um, script writing classes okay. at Brian. And um, from the feedback from that, I was pretty sure I would never successfully write any <laughs> script. <laughs> it was just doomed to like be just me for my own hobby and nobody would ever read them because they were terrible. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. okay, I'm a terrible writer. This is never going to go anywhere. Um, so then years go by, I hardly do any writing, um, but I'm just really busy with the acting and everything. And then um, the pandemic hits and there's an opportunity for a, um, a quarantine film festival. Wow. So just to encourage everybody just at home, write your little script, film it with your family, your friends, your dog, or whatever you have available to you and submit it. And we're going to have a competition. 
And I was like, you know what, this is a great opportunity to just do something fun and not have to worry if it's not great quality because everybody's kind of on the level playing field here, you know, mostly. So I wrote a short script and I had two friends from Lynchburg come down and film it with me. So it was um, me and the other actor. And then um, Woody was behind the camera and doing all that stuff and directing it. We kind of co-directed, but yeah. Um, So that was the first time that I wrote a script that was actually produced and brought to life. And it kind of swept the film awards at the festival and I was so shocked I was like I'm not gonna win anything you know but it was just a fun thing to do but like I think there was hundreds of entries from 25 different countries and somehow we like won several awards and including like best script and I was like what (laughs) just happened maybe i should be writing that was a really cool (laughs) yeah i was like what a confirmation from the lord that okay i actually do but i think all those years of acting and consuming media and consuming good stories yeah helped me become a better writer you know um even though i hadn't done a lot of writing a lot of practicing but all that consumption of good stories good media and just through the acting helped me to become a better writer and tell better stories and so from that i went on last year to co-write a feature film script for mount hideaway and um, that was just a delightful um, thing to be a part of and and then i played the lead role and yeah it should be coming out early next year i'm so excited but um, yeah so that's kind of how the writing thing and i'm working on a western script and um but it is really hard like this year i've had a hard time finding time to actually finish it but well, that's but a great love problem love just sitting down and just <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess it is <laughs> although i would like to get it made eventually but yeah <laughs> but yeah it's yeah so yeah, cool that's kind of my story with that so cool okay so my book and the whole reason behind the youtube channel that i've started and everything the book is about um is about community it's about culture change and it's about the church and how those three interact um with each other and i mean a film is just such a, an outpouring it should be it should be an outpouring of a healthy community i feel like and so can you talk a little bit about um how you see your role as an actress in any of the veins in which you're you're being creative like how do you see that because you are like creating a culture you are creating christian culture actually which is an incredibly incredibly important role to play in the grand scheme of things i believe because i mean every conversation with somebody that i've had about like how do you change the world they don't say politics they say well you have to you have to be able to dominate the arts, you know? And so, um, wow. so I'd, I'd really like to talk a, a little bit about um, how you see your role in that and, and how you want to see the Christian in Christian film industry change, um, like what types of stories you like to, uh, to craft and, and why, I mean, like there's, there's the, the big picture Western, right. But like, what is that one about? Like, is it about relationships? Is it about like, what is underneath all of the, all of the cowboy hats and (laughs) boots and guns and stuff? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I love to tell stories and to be part of stories that are, that just have really good wholesome values and that encourage, you know, good character and, and, and there's a place for, for both kinds of Christian films. There's a place for right. the ones that, you know, have a really strong gospel message or are like very encouraging to Christians and how they live their walk. Like the Kendrick brothers make really mm-hmm. great films to encourage Christians in their walk and to be, you know, yeah. and to be strengthened in their faith. And I love that. And yeah. then, but if you want to reach the unsaved, I think that there's a greater opportunity there with films that have that underlying Christian worldview and can help them ask questions mm. and kind of lead them in the right direction without being too in their face about it. Yeah. And so that's really what I like. I like just to tell a good story yeah. that has Christian morals and Christian values. And um, so that element is there, but it's not like in your face. It's not like, okay, here's, here's a come to Jesus moment. And I mean, there is a time and place for that, but um but yeah, like with my Western, it's more like it's it's telling a good story. You know, it's a, it's about relationships. It's about overcoming adversity. It's about, you know, just trusting the Lord. And um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So and I think Christian films and I'm just kind of like all over the place right now. No, it's um, fine. And my thoughts with this. But 
Christian films get a bad rap for a good reason. They mostly deserve it. <laughs> Most of them deserve it. Right. Um, right. You know, there's just, there's a lot of, the biggest problem is just poor quality. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that comes from lack of funding. And so what I, what I really want to see though, is like, I want to see people investing more into the Christian film market and like find the good like you know you just have to throw money at every christian film that does a gofundme right page, you know but who are the good filmmakers out there who are the ones that are really striving to make really good content and go support them and give mm. them money to help them make a really good quality film and yeah. if you and like and when you see people making good films like the kendricks and the Irwins, like go watch it in the theaters, you know, buy it on, you know, stream it, you know, buy it through Amazon or something. Like if you put money into it, it helps them recoup their cost and helps them make more. And yeah. so if you see people making good films, put your money towards that to support them so they can keep doing it, you know, because yeah. it really just takes, it takes so much money, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah. mind blowing, like how much money it takes. Um, and it takes a village. It takes a community to, to make the film. Like it just, there's so many, Whew, so many people on crew, you know, to really make a good product. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> no, they're really good questions though. So I, how about collaboration? Like, um, how was it working on the second mountain hideaway? That's right. Mm -hmm. Mountain hideaway, yeah. um, script, um, mount hideaway. with Mount hideaway. Um, how was it working on that with somebody else? Was that difficult? Yeah. Was that challenging? Was it better? Like, do you like to be in your own little bubble or, <laughs> do you like to do you like to have somebody to bounce ideas off of yeah I definitely like having somebody to bounce ideas off of I especially with writing I'm much better collaboratively I think yeah um I can I can get stuck kind of easily like where should this go but if I have somebody yeah to like bounce the ideas I'm like oh that's great and then like then I know where I'm going mm, um yeah. so with writing like the western like I would I did all the actual writing, but then I would um, like call Caleb and be like, okay, we got the story to this point, And now I don't know what to happen, what needs to happen next. And he's like, well, what if this happened? I'm like, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll, <laughs> you know, write the next chunk of it and then I'll get stuck and call him again. <laughs> but, um, That's awesome. And then with, with Brett, with Mount Hideaway, it was kind of a tag team effort. Like he wrote some scenes, I wrote some scenes. Um, we would kind of like tweak each other's scenes and um, he was really good at like just getting the the foundation down and I would come in and maybe sometimes add a little more heart into it um, mm -hmm. like put more flesh on it maybe you know, yeah. get the bones I'd add <laughs> it's kind of a gruesome analogy but <laughs> anyway. it works yeah it works um, so yeah so that was that was a really good experience and um, I definitely do like but you have to make sure you know that you're collaborating with somebody who is on the same page and you right. know because if I'm trying to write a very like traditional, like old fashioned type Western and somebody else wants to make like, you know, a Clint Eastwood style or like a modern day, you know, I don't know, like there's going to be two very different yeah, things, gritty, you know, you so know you whatever. Have, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of different a, kinds of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Creating wholesome content is difficult because you, it kind of removes like the shock factor of like, you know, like shock factor is entertaining and shock factor can be used inside of Christian films. It's just easier to, to use it, you know, poorly, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. I feel like a yeah. lot of Hollywood <laughs> tries to do that, to use like shock factor and, you know, whatever over the top in order, but, you know, a really good comedy that is clean is one of the best things in the world you know like yeah. you can just ask Jim Gaffigan or Brian Regan like they've made careers off of having pretty wholesome comedy routines you know and um and so that, I think comedy is really hard what what other types of genres do you like to to work in or do you not care it's just like if it's if it's wholesome if it's uh, faith-based and if it's entertaining and if it's well written like I'm in like yeah, pretty much. Like if, if I like the story and I like, you know, the, the values of it and, and like the people I'm working with and I'm like, yeah, let's yeah. do it. So I've, I've done a variety. I, I mean, I would say like my, my favorites that I really haven't had much chance to do, but I would just love to do would be Westerns and like mm -hmm. World War II movies. Yeah. Um, and like the historical fiction and I would love to do a musical sometime. Yeah. But, um, that'd be cool. We'll see if that ever happens, but yeah, it's kind of musical films are like, Oh, that's, that's <laughs> that tough. Takes a lot. That's really hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cool. Uh, and I love, you know, like sci-fi. I really want to do like an action movie, like with yeah. guns and, you know, explosions and things like, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So what would you tell yourself? So last time we talked was 11 years ago, you know, <laughs> Stacy from 11 years ago is listening to this interview. What do you need to tell her? What do you oh, wish wow. you knew 11 years ago, coming fresh out of school, feeling like you had a calling on your life to do Christian films? How, how do you do it? Oh, yeah, I guess I would just say, like, have confidence in the Lord. I would say, like, have more confidence in yourself. And that's important, too. But really just have confidence in the Lord and what you know that he's calling you to do and just, um you know, just walk forward in faith and find a really good community to be a part of, you mm. know, which I was really blessed to do, you know, cause it's, it's really, especially with, I mean, I'm sure in many industries and, um, but I can speak specifically for acting and filmmaking. Like it's, it's about the people, you know, it's the people, you know, and it's the community that you're a part of. And so I started going to film festivals You know, people ask me like, how do I get started acting? Like you need to go to film festivals and meet people yeah. um, because that's really where, that will lead to open doors, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, I would, yeah, I don't know. Have you ever bumped into <laughs> anybody in one of those in, in like at a festival or whatever, or been offered a job and have you ever turned one down? Like, I don't think I really want to work with this person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have. And, and early on in my career, God really spared me from what would have been mm -hmm. just, I think just a, a terrible um, experience and film to be a part of. Uh, Cause I, I was just fresh off of Touched by Grace. So I'm just like on this high, you know, like, oh my yeah. goodness, I was just a lead in the Christian film and God's actually doing this for me, you know, like this is yeah. happening. And, and then a director from um, Canada contacted me through my, um, I don't even think I have a website yet. I don't know how, I, anyway, he got a hold of me somehow. I yeah. was like, hey, I'm interested in you auditioning for my film. And I was like, oh, somebody's contacting me directly and they want me in their <laughs> movie. And, you know, and I just, I was so naive. So I guess I would tell, me 11 years ago don't be so naive like don't trust everybody like don't be so trusting <laughs> you know yeah but I was like he's a Christian filmmaker this would be great um thankfully he offered for me to read the script first because I didn't know to ask for that mm -hmm. um I had to sign an NDA so I couldn't talk about it but I read the script and it was so bad like there was like mm -hmm. content that was really inappropriate and like really bad yeah. and um and and just really gratuitous stuff that I was just shocked and I was like I don't even understand like what's going like the Christian message was so muddled and confused and, and obviously that just the content wasn't appropriate. And I'm like, this is terrible, you know? So I was really thankful that God taught me a very important lesson very early on, like yeah. read the scripts before you sign the contract <laughs> <laughs> and um, know who you're working with and be really careful. <laughs> yeah. So I've, yeah, I've definitely turned goals down. And, and for me, like just a personal conviction that I had was like, I didn't want to kiss on screen and so I've lost a lot of roles over that, but I don't regret it. You know, that's yeah. just, I don't think it's a sin. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. That's just my personal conviction that I have. And so um, and it's, it's been kind of hard to stick by that because there's, you know, a lot yeah. of good roles that, that I've had to, to turn down or not be considered for, but, um, but, you know, ultimately on, you know, on the side of it, like, I'm glad that I stood by my convictions. So on that, you know, but, but yeah, that, oh, that's another really important thing which God was also really, really good um, to me for that as well. Like um, just, I don't know, just my family and friends and the way I was raised and the, the Christian community that I was a part of really encouraged me to have really strong Christian values. Um, mm -hmm. So like just to know for actors, like if you want to be an actor, it's so important to know your standards before mm. you ever step foot on set, like have them written in stone, have people that will hold you accountable, you know, like, no, these are lines I'm not going to cross when I get on set and they're pressuring me to do this. Like, I know that I'm not going to, or I can have that conversation before I sign a contract. Like, I will not do these things. I will not say these words, you know, like know your convictions ahead of time and stand by them because it's, it's not worth the compromise. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's so cool. All right. So if somebody is, uh, I'm thinking like if there's a young person who's watching this and wants to know how do I become a faith-based film actor or actress, like would it go to film festivals and then what? <laughs> Audition yeah, a bunch, yeah, it is. get headshots, <laughs> like what, what all, 
what all do you have to do? Yeah. Is it worth going to school? Do you not go to school? Like, no, I would say, I mean, if, if there are good um, acting classes near you, definitely get an acting class, but research it first and make sure like that it's going to be, you know, good people, um, you know, a good teacher, there's different methods of acting, you know, and so you can like try it out and see if maybe this works for you and that doesn't. Um, but so acting classes can be good. I didn't really have any except for the few like theater acting classes we right. had at Brian. And obviously, I mean, and honestly, when we were learning about um, Meisner and I don't even remember all the guys. Like it was, it was weird. I, like, yeah. yes. I was like, <laughs> I don't understand anything that's happening right now. Like, I don't know. I just, it didn't click for me. Yeah. I, I don't have a method. I just, it's so intuitive for me. Um, that's just yeah. how I am. But some people need more of a structure and more of a method. And that's mm -hmm. great. Um, so just kind of learn what works for you and it doesn't yeah. have to fit what works for somebody else. Like don't, you're not in a box. Yeah. Um, so classes can be really good. You definitely need a professional headshot and by somebody who knows how to do acting headshots because just a normal portrait yeah. photographer isn't going to know what's needed. And that's your calling card. So um, if a casting director sees an, in, an unprofessional headshot, then they're just going to skip right over you. Um, most, you know, usually, yeah. um, learn how to do self tapes. The internet is a wonderful resource. Just Google, you know, how do I, you know, what do I need for a good headshot? Uh, how do I self tape at home for auditions? Um, and you can do that with your phone. Like you just need good lighting, you know, good sound quality, you know, and then, um, yeah, go to film festivals, Christian festivals. There's a bunch out there. Christian worldview film festival is like my absolute favorite. That's a really great place to start. Um, and then, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll just be a great resource and look for Christian auditions. I had, I think I have gotten like all my auditions almost, or maybe, maybe all, I don't know, off Facebook, actually, it's kind of really? funny, but just people I'd be connected to, um, would share an audition or you can follow pages. Um, there is a faith-based casting.com. You can sign up with them and they post auditions for Christian films. So that's also a good place to start if you're just, just getting into it. Yeah. And it is like, I, you know, cause I do have people all the time, like, how do I get started as an actor? And well, yeah. Okay. Headshots important. Like, and you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So there are definitely like those tools that you right. need to have, but like everybody's journey is so different. Like, like they can't duplicate what I did. No. You know, it's like, you can't walk the same path that I did because everybody's journey is completely different. Um, so but the it film is film festival it's tip like, was great. Like I never would have thought yeah. you got to just be in front of people and if there's a film festival you buy a plane ticket and you go and you know yeah. like I, I never would have thought that that was such a key thing you know and then become yeah. Facebook friends with them and engage with them online like it's like yeah oh yeah that totally makes sense but yeah well, probably I something else I should have said was about like I oh man I've learned so much about networking mm -hmm. and like people think they have to go sell themselves but all you have to do is like just go make friends and help <laughs> them yeah, like right. how could, it was so funny like I because I'm like I'm, I'm really really like deep down I'm a really shy person like if I walk into a room of strangers I am terrified like yeah. when I so when I left after the summer after I finished at college so like summer 2010 I heard about a filmmaking workshop that George Escobar was doing and he was kind of like a leader in the Christian film industry at that time um up in northern Virginia and so I was like well I have to go like this is an opportunity to like figure out how to get started or whatever so I went I didn't talk to anybody for two like full two days because like I didn't know anybody up there I was terrified I was yeah. a turtle in my shell I sat there and listened <laughs> and I took notes I didn't talk to anybody I was just like so like oh, just scared of all the strangers you know it's like ridiculous. Yeah. um but at the at the very end after it was over George was like I mean it was a small group of people like honestly it was like maybe like 50 75 people that were there uh, he's like, if I have not met you yet personally, please stick around because I want to make sure I get to meet everybody. So I'm like, okay. So I stuck around. He talked to me and then he invited me to dinner at his house with like his family and some of the other interns and a few other guests from the thing. Because wow. he saw like potential, like, okay, she just graduated college. She doesn't have any debt. She has her own car. Like she's somebody that, you know, could be a good candidate to start working in, in films. Yeah. And so anyway, and so then I just, I mean, once I felt like, Oh, I belong there. I don't know. Like I just, I opened up and I, I just had a blast just hanging out with him that night. And that led to working as crew on two films. Oh, I have another good tip. Go work as crew. Not thinking about the good tip, but <laughs> yeah. Like, so I started out working as crew, like just a lowly production assistant. 
but then I got to, you know, I met people, I learned how a film set is run. And I just, I learned a lot through that. And then, um, so, um, so then I started going to a couple of film festivals and, and George Escobar, a few years later, it was, we're at a festival and he's like giving the keynote address in front of like a whole bunch of people. I mean, not like hundreds, but it was a, you know, decent sized crowd. And he started talking about like networking and he's like, and if you want to, you know, to meet somebody who's just a really great example of how to network, like you need to talk to Stacy Bradshaw. And I'm like, like I have no I didn't talk for two, people, two days to people. <laughs> I, well, yeah. I mean, but, you know, since then, like I had a ton of friends. Right. Um, but I was like, I don't know the first thing about networking. I don't know how I just show up and talk to people and, and but he's like, well, that's all it is. You just make friends. And I'm like, yep. oh, right. You know, and then like just how can I help you? meet your goals like how can I, well I just loved connecting people like it, it just came so naturally to me yeah. if somebody's like I need a really good like DP for my film I'm like oh I have a really good DP or oh I have a really good actor that would be good for that role you know so like I just I connected people just naturally that's just because I just enjoy helping people yeah. and so and so that was just part of it too but yeah, yeah. Um, the people think you have to show up and hand out your card to everybody and sell yourself I'm like, no, I'll just show up, make friends, have a good time, have good conversations and see how you can help them. And then it'll just happen naturally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It takes off so much pressure, you know? So yeah, those are some tips. Very cool. I, have, I guess. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So Stacy, thank you so much for being on uh, the show and thank you for sharing so much and being willing to be so open with um, your life as a Christian film actress and script writer and voice actress and all of the many things that you do. Uh, we're so happy to have people like you in the industry. And uh, we thank you for, for, for doing it and for feeling the answering the call that God placed in your life to, to do this and do this well. Um, if you are listening in on Apple Podcasts or if you're watching on YouTube, uh, make sure that you go to jasonhunley.com, check out my connection assessment. If you want to increase the amount of community that you are able to have in your life, you have to know where you're starting from. So if you go to jasonhunley.com, download the connection assessment, I'll also send you a 31-day trial of, uh, of how to uh, grow your community in 31 days, one month to better community. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, all the good things that are down there below the video here. All right, we'll see you next week.